Patrick Smith for the channel Cure for Ignorance. <clears throat> I'm with my father, uh, Patrick Smith, Jr., Sr. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the gun chill loophole. Uh, I've been talking about this for, for years, uh, him a lot longer than me. Um, the first time Obama got elected, it was January or February, I was reading uh, the Omaha World Herald. Um, and I usually read that, I'm getting articles in there when I want a good laugh. But this uh, guy was a Harvard law professor in the article. He said that Obama probably wouldn't do much with guns except maybe to close the gun chill loophole. Uh, so in that sense, he, he gave me his credentials and he proved to me he knows absolutely nothing about the law, especially, well, at least do with firearms in one sentence there. Um, the gun show loophole is supposedly um, where you can go to a gun show and uh, I can give this guy, you know, 200 bucks or something and buy this rifle off of him and take it home and I didn't do any paperwork, I didn't do any background check. And this is apparently where all uh, criminals are getting their guns. Now, we, this, is, this is what spurred the uh, Gun Control Act in 1968. Uh, it ended the mail order purchase of firearms because people, apparently criminals, were getting all their guns through the mail from Sears Roebuck. Um, so, is it true that I can go to a gun show and just can somebody some money and, and take this gun home and there's no background check? But, you know, that's possibly true. The, there's no such thing as a gun show loophole. Uh, what it is is this. If you buy a firearm from someone who has an FFL, a federal firearms licensed dealer, you have to fill out the BATF form 4473 and say that you're not a criminal and you're not a communist and you don't want to overthrow the government and so on, and then they can sell you the gun. If you buy the gun from somebody who does not have an FFL, such as you, if I wanted to buy this gun from you, you don't have an FFL, and you sell me this gun, we don't do any paperwork. We don't have to do any paperwork. No law has been broken. So if we meet at the gun show and you sell it to me, or we meet at the 7-Eleven and you sell it to me, or at an estate sale or a garage sale, or any place else, there's no crime. So why then should it be a crime at the gun show? The bottom line is this. The only way the government can stop someone who does not have an FFL from selling this firearm without doing paperwork is for the government to get in the middle of every transaction that you have. You wouldn't be able to sell your private property to anybody without the government's approval. And that's exactly what they want to do. Uh, Feinstein's current proposal uh, is that if you have an assault weapon, and this would qualify as an assault weapon, you can't transfer it, you can't sell it, you can't even give it to your children when you die. Uh, you have to register with the federal government, and then when you die, it has to be turned into the government to be destroyed. That's what Feinstein wants to do right now. So I know myself and, uh, and a lot of my friends, uh, of course, I, I, I've never never sold a gun, well, one gun, but I've never, I buy a gun and I keep it. Um, I very rarely sell guns that I own, um, unless they turn out to be a piece of junk, but typically I buy brands I know and that doesn't happen. But I know a lot of people that buy firearms as an investment. I mean, heck, uh, four years ago, I know a couple of guys, they bought two or three AR-15s before uh, Obama took office and told them afterwards and doubled their money on them. Um, so this would eventually turn your investments of your firearms into pretty much worthless because you can't sell them anymore. Um, and uh, if, I, if I do have this gun, and or, or a pistol, say you got a Beretta 92 FS and you got a 10 round magazine for it, 15 round magazine for it, uh, you could sell the gun, but you have to retain the magazines because you couldn't transfer the magazines. Uh, and again, to, to make it so you, it's illegal to transfer it at all, so when I die, I can't, so you can't have uh, firearms going down the family anymore because of the loss, you have to destroy the firearms. How, that's ridiculous. You know, and we often uh, equate the gun show loophole. And again, there's no such thing as a gun show loophole. If you have an FFL, you have to fill out the form when you sell a gun. If you don't have an FFL, you don't fill out the form. Whether it's at you know, somebody's living room or their gun show, it works the same way. Um, we equate it to selling a car. Um, when you want to sell a car, do you have to make sure the guy is 18? No. Uh, has a license? No. Has insurance? No. Has you know, any DUIs? Do you attract the background check on them? No. If he goes there, if he takes that car and runs somebody down, either on purpose or by accident, are you responsible? Because you sold the gun? Well, no. The car? no. No. So then, why would you be responsible if he bought a gun from you and killed somebody with it? Okay. It's absurd. Uh, but the the media has made people believe through repetition that somehow you're responsible and that you have to document where that gun went, and you don't. You sell a gun, you don't have to write down anything. And I do sell guns occasionally, and I don't keep any record of it. 
Because if the government kicks in the door one day, and they will, they take my guns and my, my records, they're going to say, where's this gun at? I'm going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're going to say, who'd you sell it to? I'm, I, I'm not going to tell you. I don't have to tell you. And I won't tell you. Because if you do tell them, then they're just going to go kick in his door next. And then they're going to ask him, who do you know that has guns? And he's going to give them a name. They're going to go kick in that person's door. And so it will go. Don't give them anything. Because any name you give them is just another person that's going to be victimized by the government. So. So, and we talked about in the last video how the, uh, the previous gun ban did nothing to solve violent crime. We're actually at a 20-year uh, low for violent crime. And uh, Diane Feinstein knows nothing about weapons handling, knows nothing about weapons. Everything that she wants to ban with firearms has nothing to do with the function of the gun. I mean, uh, a fully automatic machine gun is illegal to own unless you have a $200 stamp on it. Uh, and they have a federal firearm. That's been true since the 30s. Yeah, so since, they, since the Reagan administration, no new machine guns can be manufactured for the civilian market. So what that did is it, it capped the number of machine guns available. So you can't have any more civilian machine guns. So by, by limiting the number of them, it just really increased the, the cost of them. So uh, an AR-15 that's semi-automatic can get for a thousand bucks or less. If it's full automatic, it'll cost you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for the same gun. Yeah, easy. I mean, I, I looked one time and said, just for the heck of it, and there's between sixteen and twenty-one grand. It was just ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't need that, you know. But I'm not, But the federal government shouldn't be able to tell us that we can't own it. But she, she, so they, they show uh, AR-15s, and they show them shooting fully automatic, and say this is what we're trying to ban, and it's a lie because they're already banned unless you have an FFL and you pay the stamp tax. So they're deliberately misleading people, uh, and it's, they're. They're so wrong that it can't be an accident. They're lying to people on purpose. That, that's exactly right. So, um, okay, that's really all right. So, no satanic gun show loophole. Um, all right. So, that, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll go to the next video.